Here's a tricky identification challenge encountered by bird watchers across North America. Yellow and Wilson's warblers are common birds. The males are easy to tell apart, but the plain yellow females can look quite similar. Welcome. My name is Greg, and my goal is to help you improve your bird identification skills. Today, we're going to be comparing female yellow warblers with similar-looking female Wilson's warblers. Grab your favorite field guide, and let's get started. As you look at these warblers, note how similar they are. As with all warblers, they are small, five inches or less long, bill tip to tail tip. They have short, thin, tweezer-like bills. Both are plain yellow warblers, lacking field marks such as wing bars, bold eye rings, or breast streaks. They occur in many of the same habitats during migration and the breeding season, willows, alders, and cottonwoods near water and streams. They are hyperactive, hopping and fluttering between leaf clusters, gleaning insects, and caterpillars. Making identification more difficult is that these birds are often seen above you in the canopy. This hides patterns on the head that may otherwise aid in identification. Let's look at these birds one at a time. We'll start, as always, with shape. Yellow warbler is well proportioned. By this, I mean that the head doesn't look overly large or small for the body. The body itself isn't unusually short and round or long and thin, and the tail is not notably long or short. Remember this when we get to the Wilson's warbler. There are a few features to observe here, though. The crown is smoothly round. The bill is stout. It is two eye widths long, from tip to forehead, and also the bill is as thick as the eye for most of its length. This species has long undertail coverts. They reach past the middle of the tail. The tail is often held in line with its body. Some authors note that the shape of this bird is pointed on both ends. The long undertail coverts and medium length tail make the rear pointed. The horizontal posture, round head, and longer stout bill make the front pointed. Let's compare the shape of Wilson's warbler. Okay, you may notice the olive on the crown giving away the field mark that is so obvious on the males, but not all females are this obvious. Instead, look at shape. What stands out right away to you compared to the shape of the yellow warbler? To me, I see the pot belly making the body of this bird quite round, and the head is larger and neck thicker compared to the yellow warbler. Notice that the feathers of the crown are longer and raised, making the head look more blocky. Look at that short, thin bill. It's not quite two eye widths long, tip to forehead. The outer half of the bill is thinner than the eye, which wasn't the case with the thicker-billed yellow warbler. Finally, the tail appears long and thin. This is accentuated by the short undertail coverts. The undertail coverts extend less than halfway down the tail. This makes the tail look even longer. The tail is flipped about and often cocked up at an angle. The medium-long primary projection beyond the secondaries is easy to see by the way this bird holds its wings. In this case, it's not different than the yellow warbler. Even so, it's a shape feature that I want you to get used to always looking for. Now let's look at plumage color and patterns. We'll start with this male yellow warbler. This is one of the golden yellow birds found in the West. Other populations are more flat lemon yellow. The beady eye stands out in the middle of the plain face. The stout bill is obvious now that we know to look for it. I want to draw your attention to two features. The first is the red streaking across the breast. Depending upon the population, this streaking may be more or less bold. Some females show thin red streaks. Others show a hint of streaking, but an olive shadow, not red. Still others are unmarked. The second thing to notice is that the yellow undertail coverts merge into the yellow center of the tail. That yellow center of the tail continues to the tip. The outer tail feathers appear dark. Now let's go to a female. This is probably a first year bird. It is pale yellow, even gray. The breast is plain, unstreaked. Notice the stout bill. Then look at the tail. The underside of the tail is pale yellow with dark webs on the outer tail feathers. Let's look at what we see when the bird fans its tail. Every individual feather of the tail is yellow with a dark outer web. 
When the bird flies away from you, the yellow spots in the tail are even more obvious. This is unique to yellow warbler. Now let's look at a bird up in a tree. What do we see? We don't see any face pattern. It's all yellow. There are no wing bars. The bill is stout. The middle of the tail is yellow to the tip with dark outer tail feathers. Female yellow warbler. Okay, are you ready for a Wilson's warbler? Here's a male. Again, this is one of the more golden yellow birds from the west. Short thin bill, the underside of the tail is dark. Note the yellow forehead and black crown. Many females show a hint of this pattern. Can you see the olive ear covered and the broad flaring yellow eyebrow stripe over and behind the eye? Let's look at a female. We see the big blocky head and short thin bill. The broad flaring yellow eyebrow stripe contrasts with the olive crown and ear covered. Let's go back briefly and look again at the face of a yellow warbler. This yellow warbler doesn't show any hint of an eyebrow. There is no eyebrow contrast with crown or ear covered. Okay, let's go back to an earlier photo. This warbler, seen from below, shows yellow undertail coverts contrasting with dark undertail feathers. Along with the yellow face and short bill, that makes this bird a Wilson's warbler. Now you should be more confident in your identification when you see these birds. Is there a species identification or confusing pair of birds that you'd like to see covered next? Let me know in the comments. I'll create a video to answer your question. Thank you so much for watching.